So I want to I want to talk about that because one of the things you talked about in your speech was the uh, renewal of the accord in 2014, uh, which is a big deal, right? Um, and it's it was interesting to me because your comments sort of resonated with sort of some of the vibration I've been picking up over the last two days at the conference. That on the one hand, tremendous opportunity, and on the other hand, real genuine concern that things may go badly, right? And you framed it in terms of it being about choices. Can you sort of delineate more about what you mean by the choices that are coming up? Well, I mean, I think there's different forces at work. There's very powerful lobbies and vested interests who want to um, take whatever opportunity comes up to um, actually undermine and erode our public health care system, right. our single-payer system. And, uh, and in fact, when the system's in trouble, they use that as a platform to say, well, you know, a private system is going to work, it's going to work better, when all of the evidence is actually to the contrary. So I think my comments were more about, um, although that actually I didn't say this, and I meant to, there's incredibly strong public support for a public system, those powerful vested interests want to use this opportunity to make their own inroads. And so, you know, yes, theoretically there are choices based on what's out there, and I think we are going to have to work very hard uh, not to make assumptions that things are going to happen, but that we, one, have to protect healthcare as we know it, but work on actually advancing the system and what people are referring to as phase two of Medicare. So let's talk about. Be, let's be more specific about when you say the sort of powerful vested interest. Yeah. What are you talking about there? Uh, drug companies. Um, I, I mean, I've been seeing them already in Ottawa. I mean, I, I don't want to meet with them, but I went to a reception about research, and they're all there. They've all got their business cards. Um, these are, you know, people who are very influential. I had one MP um, tell me that, you know, they have a pretty well open door policy to the prime minister's office. Um, you know, so these people have a lot of power, a lot of influence. Um, we're talking about billions of dollars. Then I think there are also, um, um, you know, policy uh, sort of think so-called think tanks like the Fraser Institute. I mean, they're trying the to right wing institutes. Yeah, right wing yeah. institutes that not, you know, they're trying to under under undermine and cause doubt in people about the sustainability of Medicare. Uh, there's the Conference Board of Canada has started a new alliance on health care. Um, I think we should be very concerned about what their agenda is. So, you know, definitely the corporate sector is in there because there's big bucks in health care. And so undermining the public system. And I think the most important thing is the doubt that they tried to cast in people's minds. Hmm. That Medicare doesn't work. We, a, we can't afford it. B, it's not sustainable. That you're going to wait longer and longer. And so people say, well, then why shouldn't we have, you know, if I can afford to pay, why shouldn't we do that? Why shouldn't I be able to go to the front of the line? Well, I mean, all of the research that I've been reading shows that where there's the most privatization, there's also the biggest wait time. So it hasn't solved anything. So again, it's a battleground, and let's not make a mistake about that. So if it is a battleground, um, what can, and uh, Adriana just touched on this at the end of her comments, was saying, do it yourself, you have yes, to do it. Yes, so that was a good what message. What should they be doing to help you advocate for community health centers? Well, I think we have to try and figure out what the federal hook is. Um, that's why I'm very interested in this report that uh, the guy from the Somerset Clinic, and who's the outgoing chair or president of the uh, association, yeah. They, Jack produ yeah, the, 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 they produced, I think, a year ago, because he said they really came up with some very good information. So I think we have to build our own agenda. And when I say we, I think it means all of the allies and partners, and there are many. You know, there's the Canadian Health Coalition, there's a um, the labor movement, there's Doctors for Medicare, there's um, professional associations, there's community organizations, there's community health centers. Like, we have to build our own agenda. So I, I took Adriana's words very closely that I think she's right. We can't, first of all, we can't wait because, um, you know, it's not very far away as far as these things go. Um, and so unless we kind of get our act together pretty soon and figure out what is the approach to dealing with this renewed health accord, and of course that will be a critical issue for us in the NDP because we'll be one of the key kind of uh, commentators, critiques of what goes on. So, we, you know, it's, so it's not just about 
saying, well, we don't like what they're doing. Well, what is it that we're proposing? And is, is your party going to be advocating for a national community health care strategy? Well, we've, um, yes, I mean, of course. I mean, we, we, um, we've already talked about a national care system. Um, one of our prior, I mean, in, in the federal election, it was one of our key priorities was um, advancing the need to have, like, for example, a national pharmacare program. So, yes, we want to um, advance uh, a national care system, a, a new phase of Medicare um, that is that is based on these ideas of, of uh, wellness, um, health prevention, community health, population health. Those are all things that are embodied in community health centers. And I, I firmly believe that uh, community health centers are the most efficient, accessible, um, you know, achievable way of, of achieving better health status for people.